Hello everybody. Um, now I'm going to continue the class on the course Indonesian value and ideologies. And I will give a lecture of uh, lecture number six on the post Suharto Indonesia, reformasi and democratization. So the topic is a, a continuity of the before the discussion on the, the foundation of the nation with the Pancasila and how the debate between Islam, secularization, secularism, and Pancasila that is uh, occurred in the beginning of the foundation of the state, uh, just after the Second World War and afterward in the 50s and 60s. And let me continue then this, uh, what happened there until finally, there is a long period under the Suharto presidency. Uh, he in power, the president Suharto was in power for about 32 years. Then end up with the reformasi and start the beginning of the, the era of democratization in Indonesia. Uh, let me continue. That is the topic we're going to discuss. Historical timeline of Indonesian state that make you familiar what happened in the country in the last 75 years. And then a little bit more discussion on Suharto New Order, Reformasi, and then the topic of democracy and decentralization. Why then decentralization was becoming a big issue? Let me start with uh, some note. Uh, if you watch carefully in the movie Sukarno, we review uh, in the before course and before the class, there is kind of a discussion, a short discussion between Sukarno and Muhammad Hatta, that is both becoming the president and vice president of Indonesia for the last time. But the discussion that happened when the Laksamana, Laksamana Maeda, the, the Japanese um, uh, general that's asking about the model, the, the kind of a political system going to be used in governing Indonesia. At that, 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 at that time, Muhammad Hatta asking, how to govern the nation, how the best way to achieve the economic prosperity and social justice for all the population. The Japanese general urged Indonesia to use the monarchy system uh, as is uh, used in, in Japan at the time. And, and, and with the suggestion, Sukarno becoming the the king and then Muhammad Hatta is prime minister. But of course, this uh, just initially rejected because uh, it's not going to be like that. And then the debate between the federation and unitary or a centralistic state. For the domestic student, you might be familiar with NKRI, Negara Kesatuan Republik Indonesia, or simply unitary state, the centralistic state with a very more power of the central government. But Muhammad Hatta was, uh, it's just in the beginning, it's just the best way is federation, it's like the US, like India, which is all the states have a more power to govern internally, while in general, they are one, a nation, Indonesia. The debate was not working so well, is uh, at the time that's a lot of insurgency, rebellion across the country, and it's not easy when in, when when the first time in the first era of the Indonesia state to govern the whole archipelago. So the debate was then end up with the Sukarno choose more on centralistic state, but of course it's not easy like that. Let us see the timeline. Like for example here, in the beginning of the years for 1945 to 1949, 
There is a political system which uses the Republic of Indonesia. Unis three state presidential system. So the president is both the the government leaders and also the the chief of the state. So that is like a like a, what we see in Indonesia today. But then in 1949 to 1950, after the the kind of a diplomatic uh, quarrel between Indonesia and the Dutch, because the, the Dutch government is still looking to recolonize the Arhipelid after the Second World War. And then finally, they agree to create the United States of Indonesia. It's like a federation system. With the intention, the Dutch government have ability to working with uh, some states in outer island, not, not in Java in Kalimantan, in Sumatra, in Sulawesi, or in uh, eastern part of Indonesia. If there is United States of Indonesia Federation, it is all the state have the sovereignty to working with the, uh, with the Dutch, directly outside from the direction from Jakarta. In 1915 and 1957, we have a liberal democracy, unitary state with parliamentary system, where before it's more presidential, this is a parliamentary democracy. Yes, it's not easy. The government, the, the Sukarno was a chief of the state, is a president, but it's not uh, the government, the chief of the government. The, the chief of the government was a prime minister. That's a, and in the parliamentary democracy or parliamentary system, it's not working so well because in the parliament there is always debate, it's always quarrel, it's no agreement at all. The opposition was working so hard to topple the the ruling party, and then the 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 prime minister and his government is only working for three months, six months, or only a year, which means there is no government at all, so it's not working. That condition led uh, Sukarno then to have a kind of initiative to create what we call it guided democracy. It's a democracy, but the parliamentary member is not elected, but chosen by the president, and then the president itself is a chief of the state and chief of the government. So it kind of abolished the parliamentary system, unitary state, with the with the president as a chief of government at the state court. It's called a democracy, but uh, actually not because it's all is appointed by the by the president, and it's not working so well. This process was create a massive problem, to be honest. Then because some the big power. Why then led to the we call it like the, the communist uprising um, in 1965, which is end up with the end of the uh, Sukarno regime, the old order. And 1965 to 1980, uh, 98, I mean, this new order, democracy, unitary state with the presidential system, but with more authoritative. They have an election. But the election was, um, is already set up from the beginning. Why is it set up? Yes, I'm going to tell you later. And then, then up started in 1998, it's kind of a reformacy with a democratic experimentation. Unitary state with decentralization. It's more power to the local government. Take a look first. What call it United State of Indonesia? or in Bahasa Indonesia is Republic Indonesia Serikat. There is part of Republic of Indonesia. This is consists of Aceh, Yogyakarta, Yogyakarta here, Lampung and Tapanuli in North Sumatra. And other states like East Indonesia, is Java, is Sumatra, Madura, Pasundan, or now it's West Java, and South Sumatra. And all the autonomous region, Banjar, Ban Banjar in Kalimantan, Bangka in Sumatra, Belitung, 
is uh, in Sumatra, in the island of uh, Riau today. Central Java is Borneo, Krut Daya, it's kind of a uh, central Kalimantan today. Riau, Southeast Borneo Federation, and West Borneo. That's all that's a state. And together they create the United States of Indonesia. If you're asking, is going to work? To be honest, it's not working. They don't have money to, in the more real thing. And it's not easy to create state suddenly while before they are not state at all. Here's a map. It's the United State of Indonesia. Repu that is consists one of Republic Indonesia itself. That is founded by Sukarno and, and Hatta started from the beginning. And other state that is uh, included in the United States of Indonesia. Like uh, the, the blue one, uh, kind of, uh, you know, some area in West Java. And then the yellow one, yeah, yeah, it's kind of a state that before was part of Republic of Indonesia and other states. Like Papua was included. Uh, yes. If you're asking, is Papua not included in Indonesia? No, it's not included. So if you see carefully, Papua is. Negara Negara line or other state, other country, which means it's not part of the United States of Indonesia. Yeah, I will more focus on the new orders. Uh, the term, the new order, or in Bahasa Indonesia is Order Baru. It's the term uh, is introduced by the President Suharto himself. Uh, as, a, as to describe his government, his era of the government, which is, is trying to differentiate with the previous government under the Sukarno, which uh, he called it as uh, the old order. So what, what kind of a new order itself? Is some simply is uh, defined as an authoritarian interfionist developmental state led by the president Suharto. It's mean the authoritarian, it's mean the government was very centralistic. The president is have a lot of powers. Of course, there is kind of a government democratic system, but all is controlled by the state, by the by the central government. Interventionist it's mean is always intervention to to make in intervene the the local government, the local policy. So it's mean the central government is very powerful. But the good thing is developmental state. They've kind of I don't know if, if you're familiar with the word. Developmental state is mean the idea of development. We try to make uh, the country move forward into more modern modernization with the development, with the create infrastructure and everything else. And how this work? So Harto has a lot of uh, support from the populist Muslim entrepreneurs. This is backed up by the military government. And advocate expensive high-tech economy. So it's a very, in some aspect, it's a very good in technology, like promoting using technology. And have a lot of support from, from big monopolistic Chinese Indonesian entrepreneurs. In some ways, they have a connection with the uh, other billionaire from Singapore, from Hong Kong, from Taiwan, and then give a lot of loan or capital or support to the working business uh, job in, in Indonesia at the time. And the, the other one was, while in Sukarno, in the last time, the last uh, era of Sukarno, Indonesia was very close to the East Bloc, to the Communist Bloc, Soviet, Russia today, or China. The new order is, is again Soviet Union. It's not linked with the China uh, mind, uh, continent or Republic of China today. But they're very good relation. You have a lot of support from the Western part, the British government, the USA, the World Bank, IMF, and other government body or other international body that is support more industrialization and uh, capitalism. So all of them that's uh, 
the good thing in some ways from the your orders. It is Suharto, if you're not familiar with this, how is it young? I mean, he looks very, uh, you know, when he's young, he's very ambitious. So look, not so aggressive, very calm, but very ambitious. Once in Time Asia, in the magazine, he have a portrait, uh, he tried to explain the, the smiling general. It's kind of a Japanese people of Java style. It's keep smile, but uh, uh, very tricky. It's been, uh, have a lot of a plan to do with everything. So it's very well planned, very calm. Not so aggressive. So if you met or you see Suharto in the television, you might find it in YouTube today. It's very, very nice person in some ways. It's like, yes. So what would do what I have done by the new order to achieve its goal. First, a new order was focused on the political and social stabilization. So I try to, so to promote more developmental agenda, industrialization, they sacrifice two things. First, freedom. The other one was uh, opposition. So kind of form of repression by the militaries and paramilitaries that is created by the new order. And forbid any opposition and any challenge of the society. One, if you're familiar with the previous uh, course in the first class, uh, we discussed how the Soharto tried to simplify the, the political party, the political system, the number of political parties, which is before was about 50. And during the new order, this is only three. Try to combine the the uh, the Islamic group into one, and uh, the democratic non-Islamic group into other one, and the one that they support the government, the Golongan Karya, the Golka support. So that two kind of stuff: repression by the military and forbid any opposition is a uh, uh, is belief then create political and social stabilization. which is very needed to promote its developmental agenda, industrialization, and more modernization programs. So the government make it kind of a patrimonialism. It's kind of a form of government in which all power flow directly from the leaders. Very autocratic oligarchic and exclude the lower and middle and upper class of the power. So the leader of this country enjoy absolute personal power. So everything which come from Suharto has to be agreed by Suharto and it's uh, working after that. And all the armies are very loyal. So it's used to repress, to repress all you know, the group that is uh, opposed the, the leaders. That's the economic development policy. If you see, they call it repolita, of a kind of five years plan for the economic development, which is actually, if you're familiar with uh, William Rochstow, the stage of economic growth is quite similar. It's kind of adopted all the Rochstow manifesto. It's uh, starting from the agriculture improvement to the infrastructure, to then to industrialization, and then manufacturers, telecommunication, and finally, it gets more kind of, uh, you know, high tech, uh, the economy based from the technology and, uh, and for other foreign investment and free trade. Yes, it's so good from the beginning. So you can see here the result. By 1996, the poverty rate dropped to 11% across the country from 45 in 1970s. So massive to drop. The real GDP growed 5% per capita. At the moment, the current president was struggling 
to at least to 5%. And the GDP per capita was increased from only 900 US dollars to about 4,000 4, US dollars in the same time. Massive industrialization, manufacture contribute to 20% of the GDP with 53% export. Healthcare facilities were massive. Life expectancy increased, that is expand from 47 years to 67 years old in 1997. And education, while in the beginning of after the independence, during the Suharto and Sukarno regime, I mean, they all ordered, the illiteracy was maybe only 10% from the all population. In 1996, 90% got the school enrollment, primary elementary school. So, so kind of, a, you know, the, the Suharto with its uh, development agenda, well, of course, with the cost of the repression, political and social repression, is a good in economy. So, for example, you might compare at the time the how the way the Chinese government, Vietnam, with a communist political system, but they able to boost the economic growth massively. The Indonesia, in some ways, it's quite similar with that uh, process, is, is that a model. But then this problem, while the economy is getting better, the prosperity was on rise, but then it's kind of a porous system. The centralistic and strong state, but the weak civil society. So it's mean it's very strong in some ways, but inside was not quite well. That's kind of call it, call it the KKN or the corruption, collusion, and nepotism. If you're not familiar, corruption was massive in Indonesia during the new orders. And collusion, collusion is mean there is no formal system the way in governing the, the, the country, the states. And nepotism, which means link, family, and friendship link is above more uh, the, the system. Or in some way, there is no meritocracy system in, 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 the, in the new order uh, politics. All is related with the friendship, the family, and more on corruption and corruption. While the, the more formal, democratic, transparency, meritocratic, there is no, it's gone. That problem. And the government is used a very massive military um, violence, military personnel or militia, which is create some minority feel unwelcome, and some people in the uh, lower middle class was feeling always feeling threatened with the uh, with the government. And one thing that happened: the situation is not quite well already with the corruption, which is becoming kind of a cancer. Uh, inside the very massive economic growth of Indonesia during the new orders. The cancer that's kind of a hit hard in, inside the, the body. Then there is an economic, ASEAN economic crisis. I'm not sure you, if you're familiar with the term, but the, at the time was massive. All the, you know, it's, it's first hit with the banking system, because the banking was a lot of a, uh, bad debt, uh, debt uh, credit, st uh, stock credit, the credit crunch is everywhere, and it's hit hard. Indonesia was hit hard. Inflation was so massive. And because of the excessive military system, there is a lot of ethnic conflict in outer islands, in West Kalimantan, in East Java, I think in Jakarta, and so on. All of the situation is getting worse, and finally, we have a reform mass. It's kind of a people power. 
So what is main people power is, uh, um, wait a second. I'm sorry, I see my kid was in trouble. Uh, the reform mass is like a people power. There is a mass rally everywhere in the country, in Jakarta, in Jogja, in Solo, and, and other big cities that uh, challenge or asking the government to step down. It's already failed. We already uh, feel threatened it and not have confidence enough from the government. If you're familiar, like what happened in, in you know, in Egypt or in Philippines or in other country, that's quite similar. But it's sort of cold. It's an iconic photo. Uh, before the collapse of the Suharto, it's, uh, the downfall of Suharto, which is uh, the Indonesian economy was in great recession. And finally, Suharto, the strong man, asking from the IMF for bailout. Within some ways, it's getting everything difficult for him. Because with the bailout, it means there's kind of a, uh, you know, a liberalization of economy, the austerity that is getting worse for the people. People's already lost confidence, and now they lost their, they left too, their, their economic prosperity too. That is move people more to protest, which is uh, led him to get down from the government. So what is reformation? It's 1998 reformation. Began with the fall of Suharto, ending his 32 years in power. And, and I kind of try to promote more open and liberal political environment, or we might call it the democratic experimentation. But of course, you're asking why that is growing Islamism in politics and society. One thing that I forgot to tell you, one of the repressed a lot by the Suharto is the Islamic group. The Islamic group is considered as kind of the very potential opposition group against Suharto. There is a lot of repress. While Suharto was collapsed, then there is a more way for the Islamic group to exercise its influence in the society. That's why it's growing. It's tried to limit the, the role of the military. And in the local government, again, the more unitary and very centralistic state during this, the Suharto regime, there is more demand on decentralization, greater regional autonomy in many aspects. Is a reformacy, is a student. And the yellow jacket is mean the student of University of Indonesia in Jakarta when they when they uh, you know they run sack into the, the parliament house the the Gedung GPL, the building, the parliament building in Jakarta, which is uh, asking for all the, for the member of parliament to, uh, you know, to impeach Suharto. Uh, that's why the, the parliament building was becoming a target and becoming a symbol. They, they when they won the reformacy and asking finally for power, give a force to Suharto to step up. Another topic was decentralization. I'm not, I'm going to kick in this part because it's, it's mean, uh, it's link, the clue is, you know, in the beginning I told you about the federation, the idea of federation in the governing the whole Arhai village. It's mean more power for the local region. That kind of uh, demand of federation and authority, autonomy, was then manifested in what call it decentralization. The regional autonomy and bringing democracy to the people. This is the idea. Of course, it's not working so well. And then, after the reformacy, they have a multi party system. It's not only three party system, as it's done by the Suharto. 
And this held a more fair and democratic election so in the last of five elections, 1998, 1999, I mean, 2004, 2009, 2014, and last year, in 2019. And if give a limit to the presidential term, only two terms, Suharto abused the rule of becoming a six time elected by the parliament. Uh, to be a president, it's now it's limited to only two terms. A lot of more on civil and political freedom, speech, expression, assembly, personalism, promoting human rights, equal rights for all citizens, including the minority group, and the fight against corruption and collusion. What is what does it mean actually democratization in Indonesia? Are you asking how the the development so far? Yes, of course, there is a lot of uh, trouble. I'm going to tell you on the last course, in the last uh, session in the course, is going to kind of evaluate its uh, the flaw. But in general, that is uh, happening. So now, in democratic consolidation, and only some Preserve. Yes, the idea about the federation and unitary state is a must initially after the reformacy, but then fighting away again and all the elite is more agree about the unitary state and balancing and controlling the decentralization, the healthcare and medical services decentralized, basic middle education decentralized and then like a, the proliferation of more profits of Vijayasi. One of the controversial, you might question about the, the spatial region, like in Aceh. Aceh have a spatial region to be government under the Islamic Sharia law. Papua and West Papua, because of the very rich with the mining resources, and they got the spatial region for the economy. And Yogyakarta also have a special for its cultural sources and political contribution to the early days in the bank. One thing about Yogyakarta was uh, uh, during the, the years after the revolution, when the government, as the central government, I mean, was Sukarno at the time, was struggling to be in power, against the external uh, challenge from the Dutch army, the Dutch military, and politically from the international politics, also from the internal, with a growing insurgency, rebellion, and protest, including about the debate on secularization as well. And they don't have money. So one time, the central government is not in Jakarta, but move out to Jakarta. So, so at the time, the, the, the sultan was provide all the expense, the way they govern the rural archipelates from Jakarta. This, uh, this historical event was a lead to the grant as a special region for Jakarta up to today. So that, that, that kind of a process that is, I told you about what happened in Indonesia um, during the new order and then reformation. I think that's all and there's already 75 years old Indonesia and hopefully it's going to be more better and better. And you have a question, please just send me uh, via the classroom or by email. Okay, I think that's all for today. Thank you.